All right, so good evening, everyone. How are you, how are you, how are you? This is Aisha Naila of Soulful Solutions. I am so happy that you're here this evening to join me for the five sensual secrets that powerful women use to get what they want. Yes. So, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I'm asking that you hold all questions. Hold all questions until the end. If there is something that you think you may forget, then go ahead and put it in the Q&A and I will see it at the end of the webinar. I'm asking that everyone get something to eat and or drink right now, something that's tasty, something that you love, because we're gonna use that sometime during this webinar. And also, if you hear anything that's juicy, that really rings your bell, go ahead and put it out there on social media with the hashtag sensual secrets. Oh, another thing, sensual secrets, speaking of sensual secrets, Sensual Secrets Party, hashtag Sensual Secrets Party. I am giving a contest and I'm asking everyone, all women, to join in my movement and to help me celebrate sensuality in honor of my birthday, April 6th. So go ahead and post your sensual pictures, what sensuality means to you, and use the hashtag Sensual Secrets Party. And I will be selecting six winners to win some juicy prizes. If you hear something that resonates with you and you want to type in the chat, type ow. All right. So if you hear something juicy, type in the chat ow. And one more thing, we're here. We're going to have fun. So hello, hello, hello. All right, so here's the agenda. We already did housekeeping. Next, we're gonna go into the intro and I'm gonna let you know a little bit about myself. And then we'll talk about the purpose of this webinar. And then I'll take you into what is sensuality, the reason that you aren't getting what you want. And later on, I'll have a special offer for you. And I know that you definitely want to stick around because it is juicy, juicy and delicious. <laughs> and after that, we will do a Q&A. Then I hope you have some questions for me because I'm ready to answer. So let's get on into it. Why you should listen to me and why you're here. So who is Aisha Naila? Aisha Naila is the owner of Soulful Solutions LLC, which is a women's empowerment coaching brand, certified women's empowerment coach, certified professional life coach, certified love and sensuality coach, spirituality coach, and energy healer, a published journalist. I used to write for Bahia Women's Magazine, and I've been published in several other magazines over the years. A natural born clairvoyant. We will get into that later. I'm an angel reader and a mixed media artist. And what I specialize in is intuitive affirmation paintings. So in 2004, let's go back, y'all. Let's go back. 2004, I started an organization along with my mother, Delta Lambda Delta Sorority Incorporated, which was a community-based sorority. And our purpose was to bridge the gaps between womanhood and sisterhood. I'm also the proud mother of a 10-year-old named Angel, and I am a homeschooling mom. So sometimes it does get a little rough juggling entrepreneurship with homeschooling, but it's well worth it. And I enjoy the fact that she gets to see me build my empire and build on my dreams. For all of you who have been following me on social media, there are times when you may hear a little barking noise or a little growling in the background. And that's this one right here, Panda in the yellow Adidog <laughs> sweatsuit. 
So I have two little fur babies, Panda and Diva, who is a 12-year-old Maltese. Panda is a one-year-old Yorkie Bichon mix. All right, so. A little about me. I get up every day loving life. Like, I love life. If you love life, I want you to type it in the chat room right now. Life. I love life. Who else loves life? Because we have to be high on life. There's so much negativity going on in this world right now. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I see you all. Love life. Love life. Love life. Yes. There's so much negativity going on in the world right now. And let me just go back to this slide. And we have to love life every day. We have to love life and put that positive energy out there to draw that positivity back to us, right? Positivity breeds positivity. So I'm happy that I get up every day doing what I love. This is, this is my passion. This is what I love. And to be able to do what I love and make money doing it, thebomb.com. <laughs> I constantly experience miracles all of the time. Like I go outside and just goodness just comes to me. I'm the happiest that I have ever been in my life. I've manifested soulmates. Yes, that is a thing. It is possible, right? I've manifested soulmates and I summoned my twin flame. And I am now in the healthiest and most loving relationship that I've ever experienced. I have become a money magnet. Seriously, I've created these techniques where I just put the intention out there and somehow it just comes to me. And I have a 100% drama-free life. Like, we don't have time for drama, right? Like Mary J. Blige said, no more drama, right? No more drama. If, if y'all are tired of drama or you don't have time for drama in your life, I want to see you type drama. Type drama in the chat room, drama. No more drama. I'm telling you, no more drama. All right. That's right. No more drama. No more drama. So I live my life on purpose. Because it's my belief that we are all born with a purpose, right? And that's the reason why we exist. We exist to fulfill that purpose. And if we're not fulfilling our purpose, then we're wasting time, <laughs> precious time. So every single day, I live my life on purpose. If you're living your life on purpose, type purpose. Purpose, y'all, purpose. Yes, purpose. That's right. That's right, Tiffany. I see you. Purpose. Right. Purpose. So, and I am totally in love with myself. Totally, totally in love with myself. I love me some me, y'all. I love me some me. You know, like everything about me from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, I look in the mirror and I'm like, yes, I love me some me. <laughs> But my life wasn't always like this. This is me. You see that picture? I like to call that my Barney, my Barney suit. <laughs> that was me 15 years ago. Now, looking at that picture, I... It makes me tear up because I remember what I was going through at that time. And I remember where I was at at that time. <laughs> Whew. I was in a toxic relationship. I was in a toxic relationship with a man for seven years. And you see that no name there? The reason why that says no name is because I had no name in that relationship, literally no name. I was with this man for seven years and within the seven years, he called me nothing. I was working 18 hours a day on a corporate job, 
somebody else's I was making, I was bringing somebody else money, okay? Putting in 18 hours a day. Thank you, Daphne. Putting in 18 hours a day and I was tired, but I thought that I was living because I was making good money. I was 60 pounds heavier and the weight just crept on. Nobody told me I was getting any heavier. I mean, I knew that I had gone up a dress size or two, but... <laughs> I was like, well, maybe my, my, my body weight is shifting, <laughs> but I was unhappy. I was unhealthy. And like I said, I thought that I was living, right? Nobody pulled me aside and said, girl, because <laughs> no one knew what was going on. Somehow or another, people thought that I just had this ideal and perfect life because I was engaged, I was about to buy a house. I was with a man who had a great family. I was living on eight cups of coffee per day. That's what was keeping me going. I mean, if you're getting to work at five or six o'clock in the morning and sometimes not leaving until two or three o'clock in the morning just to turn around and come do it again. Literally, I was the only person left in the building in Manhattan having to go home to Brooklyn. and. The perks of it all was that they were giving me a, um, a private car and paying for my dinner. <laughs> but other than that, I was just wasting away. <sighs> then on top of all of that, I remember, <laughs> I, I remember I was in North Carolina visiting family. My mother and I, my father was back in New York. And he called and said that the doctor had called and said that my mother needed to come home right away because she had been diagnosed with leukemia. So we headed back and the doctor said she had the great, the good kind of leukemia, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL. Because it wasn't acute, she wouldn't have been dead in two years, but he gave her about five. So on top of everything else, I had to come to grips with the idea that my mother would not be with me much longer and I needed to cherish every moment. I was out of touch and out of love with myself and I was surrounded by drama and negative people and I liked it. I liked being around the drama. I wasn't bringing the drama, but I liked it because it took it took the, the weight off of me. It, it, it took the spotlight off of what I was going through. So I decided enough was enough. I chose me. This is me <laughs> after I kicked my man, my ex fiance to the curb. I lost all of the weight I gained. I went on this, this diet plan where you know I was eating six meals a day and I was feeling good. I was feeling healthy. I was feeling vibrant. Yes, you couldn't tell me anything. I lost all of that weight plus an extra 20 pounds. Yes. And I was happy. I was so happy. And then I fell in love with what I like to call my saving grace. And <laughs> I call him my saving grace because he was there saying all of the right things that I needed to hear as I was leaving out of my relationship. He actually gave me the motivation to leave my relationship. And I saw all of the signs in him, all of those red flags. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. If you know what I'm talking about, type red flags, because you know, we see those red flags and we ignore it, right? That little little voice inside of us starts saying like, mm -mm, but we say, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I just, I went ahead and I was like, mm, you know, he's not bad. Yes, honey, red flag. I was like, he's not bad. He's not bad. <sighs> my mama couldn't stand him. My daddy couldn't stand him. My aunt couldn't stand him. Nobody could stand him, right? Except for my friends. But I stayed. And then I found out that he was cheating on me. 
So the minute that I found that out, I was like, nope, no more. I am not compromising myself for any relationship ever again. And then I found out I was pregnant. <sighs> so I'm like, what do I do? And I stuck with him because who wants to be pregnant and alone, right? <laughs> so I stuck with him because I was addicted to how good I felt. I didn't realize that I still had this baggage that I was carrying around. See, I thought that I had just let it go because I had lost my weight and, you know, I got rid of all of that stuff. No, 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 no. I still had things that I needed to release. And because of that, I could not release him. But of course, out of that came a blessing, my daughter, right? Okay. So now we're at February, 2009. I lost my mother. She went into the hospital Christmas day, 2008, and she never came back home. My daughter was the light of her life. So the last time that we heard her voice was on my, my daughter's birthday in January. She called and she sang my daughter happy birthday. By then she had developed COPD and she was on oxygen 24 seven. And instead of being a support system to me, my daughter's father was busy cheating again. So this time he left to be with another woman. So here I was dealing with the grief and the, of the loss of my mom but also dealing with the loss of my daughter's father. And it was so, I had, I wasn't a celebrity, but I had a very public breakup because of, we could, because we were, we were both a part of a, a large organization and everyone knew us and it was on Facebook. And I knew the woman that he cheated with. It was hard. It was hard. On top of all of that, my dad, my father, to watch my father cry the way that he did, grieving over the love of his life that he had been with since he was 16. They, they were high school sweethearts and they were a few months shy of being married for 40 years. So he's trying to hold it together for me, knowing that I'm going through things with my daughter's father and I'm trying to hold it together for him and my daughter. So in a way, I didn't allow myself to grieve the way that I should have. The way that I found out later on would have been the healthiest thing to do. And I almost lost my mind. I'm telling you, I almost lost my mind, ladies. There were days when I would get up and I just could not get myself out of the bed. And the only thing that could get me out of the bed was the fact that I had a one-year-old daughter who totally depended on me. I wasn't making any money. Every day was just going one day into the next. I was full of anxiety, panic attacks. I was depressed. I started contemplating, could I really, could I, would I take myself out of this world? Could I really do it? And the only thing that would, like I said, keep me here was my daughter. I was so full of fear that I didn't even want to go outside because the loss of my mother triggered fear of my daughter losing me. And so I thought that if I went outside, I risked something happening to me and that would leave my daughter motherless. And I was the only parent that she had. So like I said, I was broke. I didn't, I, I didn't have any money. <laughs> I didn't have any money. And I ended up having to go on food stamps for the first time in life. And it was hard. It was hard. But one day I decided enough was enough. Enough was enough. I had enough. I was tired. I was tired. I was tired of being sick and tired. I was tired of being weighted down. This wasn't me. This wasn't me, right? So I was like, something has got to give. And I looked at my bookshelf one day and I saw this book right here, Sacred Woman by Queen Afua. My mom had bought that book back in 2000 and she had given it to me 
but I couldn't understand the book then. I, I wasn't in the right space, but it was the right space now. And I picked up the book and I started looking at it and I said, hmm, you know, this is such a deep book. Maybe there are people out there who have gone through this sacred woman journey with Queen Afua. And I started seeking people out and I found graduates of Queen Afua's secret woman program. And we formed a sister circle and went through the gateways and it was my life saver. That book saved my life. I started digging deeper into meditation. I started eating right. I started just tapping into spirituality and God and prayer. And I met Queen Afua. I since then I've met her several times. I've well, I've been around her several times. And every time is just amazing. But she always gave me such words of wisdom and she was truly my lifesaver. And then I like to say God led me to this woman, Suparna Bassine. Suparna Bassine of She Creates Change. <laughs> that is what transforms me ultimately into who I am today. That was my reason for pursuing coaching because before then I didn't know you could really make a living doing that. And she helped me to define my purpose and to be okay with being me. Now, if you're here today, you were drawn to this program, this webinar. And so that tells me that you are ready to start a new lease on life. Like you're tired of being tired. You've been going through some things. Like we've all gone through some things and you're like, look, I need help. I need help. You're tired of broken promises that lead to your broken heart, the lies, the cheating. And you're ready to be able to love again. You want to open your heart to receive love. I've heard a lot of you in my DMs talking about you want to manifest that man. You can. It's time you want to release anger. Anger will kill you. Anger will kill you. Anger will hold you back. It's time. I'm glad that you're here. It's time. You're done with playing small. You're not going to sit on somebody's sidelines anymore. You want to save your relationship. Maybe you and your mate aren't communicating the way you used to. Maybe you're just not soft enough or nurturing enough. And that's okay because that happens. That happens. Life happens. And life can make us hard. It's okay. You're tired of having the same outcome on different days. We've been there, done that, right? If you've been there, done that, same outcome, different day, type, been there, done that. <laughs> just type been there been there been there and you need more energy more energy more happiness you know that there's more to life than this and you need a change ASAP and I'm here to tell you that the key to everything that your heart desires, everything that you, that you ever wanted is about to be given to you right now by me, everything. So I want you to sit with an open heart and an open mind. And I want you to be able to receive everything that I'm giving you this evening because it's what changed my life. It's what saved my life. So after this webinar, you'll be able to have a clearer definition of sensuality. You'll understand the key role it plays in your existence as a woman. Y'all, I don't know about you, but recently I've been getting really irritated by what I see on Instagram. Now, I'm not knocking anybody because I love my body too. 
But I just feel like there are a lot of sensuality coaches who should be more sexuality coaches. And I get the sexuality is a part of human existence, right? I get that sensuality and sexuality do coexist and go hand in hand. But I think we, as women, a lot of times we put too much emphasis on the sex and not enough emphasis on the sense. Right. And, and usually when that happens, it's because we're running from something and it hurts me. It hurts me when I see these beautiful women on Instagram, just putting it all out there, <laughs> like putting it literally all out there. <laughs> okay. After this webinar, you'll also know how to use your favorite treats to manifest new love or to improve a current relationship. Now I know you're like, how is that possible, Aisha? It's possible. I'm going to tell you how. Understand the connection between sensuality and purpose. Hmm. Sensuality and purpose. And how to use sex. I see here I go sexuality right how, how to use sensuality to tap into yourself and get your mojo back so you know how Stella got her groove back I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna help y'all get your mojo back I'm gonna help you get your mojo back that's if you lost it but if you lost it I'm gonna help you get it back all right so what is sensuality what is sensuality 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 see i like to play with words everybody that knows me knows i like to play with words i'll break them down i'll mix them up i i like to i like to to really dissect them so here we go since you ality since you ality and then you have since you all it's he. So we broke that down a little further. Since you all it's he. Since you all. Since you all. Sensual. Since you all. Now, if you look at what I wrote here, what do you see? What's the, what's the one thing that you see that stands out in those words? Anybody? I'm gonna check the chat room. What's the one thing that you see that stands out? Yes, 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 that's right. You, you, you can't have sensuality without you. You can't be sensual without you. <laughs> and there's a lot of women running around here being sensual without them. They doing it for everybody else. It doesn't work like that. So it's all about being in touch with all of you, all of you, all of you, <laughs> knowing who you are, right? Truly understanding who you are at your essence. Like, who are you? Under all of this, who are you? It's a lot of people that don't know who they are. Who are you? It's about using all of your senses to celebrate your divine femininity. Doesn't that sound delicious? Yes, divine femininity put your crowns on <laughs> and it's about reconnecting with the creator's energy within you the creator's energy within us i want that to resonate like that's deep y'all do you understand like we have the creator's energy within us so much to the point that we're able to bring forth life like we are the the light bearers to this world. And yet we take it all for granted. Crazy. And even if you think about it, right? Well, we'll get into that later. But <laughs> sensuality, it opens you up to be able to experience happiness and sheer bliss. Because when you are in touch with yourself, there's nothing around you that can affect you. There's nothing that can bring you down. You know, when you have a love for yourself, come on now, right? We're on top of the world. Nothing's going to bring us down. 
It helps you to find confidence when the world has dealt you a bad hand. Yes, because you're like, I know who I am. You're not going to tell me who I am. I'm going to walk my walk, right? It reveals who you are. Once again, it reveals who you are because you know, you know who you are. You're sensing you. You're sensing you, right? So it helps you gain a better understanding of your wants, needs, and desires. Because once you know who you are, you're able to, to communicate clearer about what it is that you want, what it is that you need in your relationships romantically, professionally. You see how it works? All right. It strengthens your spirit because sensuality, sensuality, right? Sensuality, sense you all, sensual. It strengthens our spirit. It connects us, brings us closer to God. These are gifts that were given to us by God, by the creator. Like, how amazing is that? Sensual. And it releases you from anxiety and depression because when you know who you are and you stand strong and firm in that, all of a sudden that anxiety and that depression and that fear starts to just melt away. You're like, yes, yes, I'm going to stand strong. I'm, I, I know who I am, right? <laughs> all right. So. People who lack sensuality usually will have nasty attitudes towards life. You know, the ones that act like they woke up on the wrong side of bed every morning, right? They feel unfulfilled, unfulfilled. They lack huge support systems because nobody wants to be around that negativity, right? They have poor communication in their relationships. Because if you can't... If you don't know who you are and you don't know what you like, then, then what, right? They lose touch with who they are. They dread going to their job because, once again, it's all about sensing you, knowing what you like. And when you know what you like and you know who you are, you're not going to settle for anything less than what it is that you want, what makes you happy. So there are a lot of people just settling for jobs just because it makes the end, it makes ends meet. They don't believe in nothing in, in themselves because they're still searching for their purpose. And they're single. A lot of people are single, not by choice, but because nobody wants to be with them. It's not that they can't get a date. It's just that when they get a date, they don't get a call back. <laughs> they have no patience. I've seen them, you've seen them, always outside somewhere, screaming at the kids, you know, to the top of their lungs, always have something to say. And a lot of times they are promiscuous. And that has a lot to do with, once again, not knowing who they are, but searching for who they are in other people, right? Because sensuality is powerful. It's powerful. It's all about confidence. And if you don't know who you are, sometimes you can be afraid of that power. So instead of standing in it, you'd rather give it away. Oh. Mm -mm -mm, I tell you. So I want to ask a question. I'm going to the chat room. I want to know how many senses do we possess? That's right. Stand in your power. Don't give it away. Don't give it away. <laughs> how many senses do we possess, y'all? Give me a number. Five. All right, Lisa, I see you saying five. Twenty-five. Did you say twenty-five, Shalina? Twenty-five? Okay. <laughs> All right, now, well, we need to talk about that. Six. Five, all right. Daphne says six. Tiffany says six. Okay. That's right. Yes, that's right, Daphne. <laughs> it is a trick question. <laughs> okay, here we go. So the reason you aren't getting what you want. I'm going to tell y'all the answer a little while. The reason you aren't getting what you want is because 
you aren't practicing conscious sensuality. Yes, conscious sensuality, it is a thing. I'm here to tell you, it is a thing. <sighs> Tapping into the gifts of your what? Seven senses. Now, if you ask anybody else, <laughs> they might just say you have five or six. I'm telling you seven, okay? And I'm saying it because I've tapped into my seven senses. I don't know about y'all, but if you have it, I'm going to show you how. Stick with me. I will show you how. <laughs> seven senses. Well, let me go back here. See, I'm getting a little too happy. All right. Seeing. Tasting. Touching. Smelling. Hearing. And here are my two. Envisioning and being. And it's so funny. I want to give a shout out to Kali because um, when I was watching her webinar the other night, she mentioned envisioning. And I was like, gosh, we are on the same wavelength, right? <laughs> envisioning and being. Envisioning and being. Now, let's talk about envisioning. Envisioning is, like Daphne said, it's all about the intuition, the third eye, right? That's what they call it. So it's all about tapping in, going in, able to see in to you. That's what that is. It's like that sixth sense, that thing, that, that voice that's in you, that godly voice, right? That voice that awakens you, that keeps you out of harm's way. That's envisioning, able to see what it is that God has put on your life, that God has in store for you, that God wants you to do, right? That creative energy, envisioning, that's what it has to do with envisioning and being, living the life that you were put here to live serving your purpose, living in your purpose, being alive, being, being. There's a lot of people living in this world that are not being. They're not doing and they're not being. They're just breathing. <laughs> so, all right, remember I asked you to get something to drink or eat, guys, ladies. Here we go. Drink or treat, drink or treat, like trick or treat, drink or treat. So I don't know if anybody has any anything that, that they're drinking or eating, but if you do, I want you to do me a favor. Let's play a game. I want you to take a bite or take a sip of whatever it is and who, whoever has it, and I want you to describe it. I want you to just take one word, one word, and like really describe it, like put it, let it dance on your, all right now, I see that, I, you got your wine, all right, Daphne, I want you to let it sit on your tongue for a little bit, and I want you to really think about the flavors, the, the levels, the depths of the flavors that they dance on your tongue, right, and I, and I want you to describe it right now, if there's anybody, Daphne, take a sip of that wine and tell me what you taste, girl, all right, well, wet, wet, wet's good. That's a, that's a sensory word, good, wet. Woodsy, all right. Mm. See, see, Shalina, I'm gonna use my word delicious. Woodsy is just sensual and delicious. Mmm, <laughs> okay now, ginger, yes. Yes. All right. April sweet. Divine. All right. I love that. All right, Tiffany. Spicy. Yes. Yes, ladies. I love it. And that's what sensuality is about. It's about allowing ourselves to truly enjoy the gifts and luxuriate in the gifts of our senses. Like we were given these senses for a reason and we take them for granted every day every single day. I remember like, I used to just rush through life and we all do it, right? 
we're we're on our way to work or we're on our way out the door we need to eat something and we just gobble it down like we don't really take the time to think about the flavors especially when it's something that we're used to eating one day i really thought about it and i was like man you know i was drinking a smoothie and i was like i've gotten to the point i'm so used to this that it tastes good and it's refreshing but is it really good like you know and and i I took the time to savor. That's right. Savor the flavor, Daphne. Savor the flavor. I took the time to savor the flavor. And I was like, man, I want this experience all the time. <laughs> yes. All right, Shalina. All right, mm, girl, tingling. I'm right now. <laughs> all right. So now I'm going to go into the five practices for a more sensual life. Yes, because we all need to be about that sensual life. So number one, and this is what I want you all to do. Promise me that you will all put this into practice because I trust me and believe, even if your life is good right now, it's going to be the best that it's ever been when you start putting these things into practice. <laughs> Surround yourself and your senses only by those things that most highly represent what you want to attract into your life. I want you like sit and, and, and let that resonate for a while. Surround yourself and your senses only by those things that most highly represent what you want to attract into your life. So let's say you want to attract a rich man. Okay, because a lot of a lot of single ladies out there they talk telling me what they want to manifest and they want a rich man. All right. Well, if you want a rich man, is a rich man eating ramen noodles? I mean, there's nothing wrong with ramen noodles, but I'm just saying, like, is a rich man eating ramen noodles? You know, if, if is that what you want your man eating? You know, is because we attract that which we are, right? So you're going to use your senses as somewhat of a vision board. Everything that you want in life, allow your senses to really engage in it. If you want to attract more love, then you need to start engaging in more sweetness. You need to start smelling flowers, buying yourself flowers, surrounding yourself with flowers. You need to start drinking maybe some nice sweet juices or some sweet wine or you need to start allowing yourself to see things that are sweet, um, pictures of romance and, and just sweet, sweet, you know, anything, love, romance, sweet, softness, right? Massaging. So start getting things that are luxurious that are soft. You want you want to you want to allow your senses to draw things into your life. That is the secret. And believe me, I've been putting it into practice for years and it has changed my life so much, so much. I have manifested some amazing things. I even manifested my man. Yes. Um <laughs> So surround yourself and your senses only by those things that most highly represent what you want to attract into your life. That's number one. Number two, each and every day, allow yourself to fully engage in the gift of all seven senses. See, we just we just touched on that a bit, right? How we rush through life and we just don't take the time to engage, allow ourselves to fully engage in the things that are going on. You know, like even Starbucks. Now, I love the smell of coffee, but if you go past the same Starbucks every day, eventually that coffee doesn't even do anything for you anymore, right? <laughs> so it's like, Allowing yourself to fully engage, conscious, conscious sensuality. Making the choice to turn your brain on to whatever it is that you're doing. 
right? Because this draws things to you. It, it, it draws like sweetness. Like, okay, if I'm drinking juice and I'm thinking about the layers of the flavors, it's going to draw that sweetness into my life. And we want sweetness. Like, we have to take the time. These senses were given to us for a reason. And I want you to know, right? I want you to know. Think about this. As women, we are blessed with heightened senses. We're blessed because we give birth. We, we bring forth life. And so God blessed us with heightened senses, more so than a man. And I'm not knocking any men that may be watching or anything, but we need those heightened senses, right? To protect ourselves when we're carrying our babies, to protect them when they're out here, when, they, when, we, when we give birth to them. Our senses are extremely heightened, and yet we don't take advantage of it. Those senses were given to us for a reason. Our lives would be so different if we just took the time to allow ourselves to enjoy them. Can you imagine how much joy and pleasure we would, we would experience on a daily basis just taking the time to luxuriate in those senses? All right, number three. Create a magical morning ritual that includes envision journaling, intentional meditation, and 3D affirmations. And these are techniques that I have mastered over the past 10 years, right? Journaling. Journaling is life-changing, but, but when you truly do envision journaling, it's like doing intentional journaling. It's like going inside and pulling out all of the things that your soul wants, all the things that you need, and journaling about those things to attract them and bring them into your life. There's a way to do that. It's possible. I've done it. I have a whole lot of journals. <laughs> you can craft your life and shape it. Remember, you're a creatress. You were put on this world, in this world as a woman. You you're a creatress. Create. Create the life that you want. It's easy. It's really easy. <laughs> Intentional meditation. Going into meditation, setting an intent before you go into meditation, and coming out with the most profound answers. God speaks to us through meditation. You know, I always have been taught and always tell my clients, prayer is speaking to God. Meditation is listening to God. And when we go into meditation, we're coming to God with an intention. We're, we're asking for, we're asking to receive certain answers. So intentional meditation and 3D affirmations. Now, y'all are like, what's a 3D affirmation? It's something that I do that I came up with, you know, just affirming things in first, second, and third person, right? And really you, crafting these affirmations in a way that you feel them resonating within your spirit. It's life changing. It shifts, just shifts the energy around and it draws just all of this goodness into your life. I'm telling you, it's magical. It is magical. All right, turn selfless into selfies. Ladies, my daughter likes to call me the selfie queen. I will take 100 selfies a day. <laughs> if anybody else is with me, if anybody else loves selfies, please type selfies. Tell me I'm not alone. Selfies, selfies, y'all, selfies, anybody, selfies. <laughs> hey, sunshine, thank you, girl. So, yes, selfies. Sure, Sunshine says selfies. That's right, girl. You take some great selfies too. April says selfies. Selfies. That's right. Selfies. Uh-huh. Snapchat filters. Yes. <laughs> you got to turn selfless into selfies, meaning get into you. Those selfies can be used as a manifestation tool and a healing tool. I'm telling you. Like, there's a way that you can use them. I mean, we take them all the time, but 
consciously taking selfies, right? Like my daughter always says, like, mommy, why do you have so many selfies in your phone? I like to look at myself. <laughs> I like to look at myself. Hello, Soulful Solutions, be full of you. I am full of myself. We all need to be full of ourselves. We need to get into selfies. You can use them. I'm telling you, I have. I have shown clients how to take these selfies and use them to boost their confidence. Turn your selfless into selfies. It works. Daphne said, 1,065 selfies in her. See, girl, I'm not the only one. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. I love it. I love it. Keep taking those selfies. I love it. All right, number five recognize the persuasion in your senses and tune in okay so ladies let's just be real sensuality is persuasive okay now i always go back to adam and eve <laughs> and how she was able to get him to eat that apple Child, you think she you think she was just like, hey, eat this apple? No, no. She put on the sensuality. She was in touch with herself. She was like, I am woman, okay? I'm going to walk this way. I'm going to walk this way. I'm going to walk this way. Okay. Hey, honey, here's the apple. Sensuality. Sensuality. It is persuasive. It is persuasive also because it allows us to know who we are, right? And when we know who we are, queens, right? We are queens. It's like, we're going to get what we want. We're powerful. Confidence is power. You can't tell us anything. So turn, tune into your senses, like tune in and turn yourself on. Turn yourself on, get what you want. You can get anything you want. By tuning in, tuning in. When you tune in, guess what happens? Other people are going to tune in. I'm telling you, other people are going to tune in. So other tools to help with conscious sensuality. Yoni eggs, painting, dancing, waist beads, candlelight, fire breathing. These are all of the tools that you can use to put yourself in touch with you. And so I'm coming back to this picture. You see this picture here? Now, I like to look at this picture and I look at these other pictures and I'm like, wow, look at that. I look younger and I feel more vibrant in these pictures than I did 15 years ago. And I can show everybody else the tools that I use to get to this point. Cause I want everybody, like this is my mission. I want everybody to be able to stand up and just feel good, feel good about yourself. I have the solution for you. Master the art of sensuality and get anything you want. Now, this is a masterclass that I will be offering to everybody because I want you all to just master sensuality the way I have and to really let it play a role in your everyday life so that you can start manifesting miracles and manifesting everything you want and get out of your own way, right? You got to get out of your way by getting into you. So... Master the art of sensuality and have anything you want. You're going to get clear on what is personally holding you back from whatever you want. You're going to learn to tap into your divine femininity and unlock your inner goddess. Discover ways to be softer, more feminine, and more nurturing in your relationships. Discover how to recognize the voice of your intuition using your daily bath routine. Mm-hmm. Learn how to use selfies to become a magnet for the life you want. Finally, love all of your body's inner perfections and flaws and feel good naked using a mirror ritual. 
and discover how to instantly relax yourself using the power of sounds. We're gonna kick fear and anxiety in the butt and get rid of it once and for all. I have a technique for that. Live a life of peace and tranquility that attracts miracles every single day. Discover how to make your bedroom a manifestation machine. Become a magnet for everything that you've ever wanted in life. Improve your relationship between you and your children. Learn techniques to protect yourself from other people. Toxic energy. I had to learn that when I was working in corporate America. Mm. And there was like this thing that I used to do. <laughs> And I mean, nobody knew what I was doing, but I was doing it. And when I tell you, it was shifting energy everywhere. Everybody was feeling it. And I was like, okay, I'm on to something here. And I've been doing it ever since. So what you'll receive, you'll receive access to a two-hour private masterclass with me. Yes. A group angel reading before the class begins. So it's just a one card pull. Group coaching at the end of the masterclass a replay of the masterclass that you can access forever and ever, ever, and ever, ever. A worksheet that you can use to increase the effectiveness of what you'll learn, and you can use it to journal your experiences. And access to a private community where you can receive continued support from other people in my soulful family, my soulful family group. All right. So who is this for? It's for you if you're tired of being broke down and feeling broken, tired. Like, come on, who wants to, it's time. You're ready to manifest a soul-centered relationship. It's 2018, right? You need to attract that right man. You, you need to attract that right mate to your life. Like, it's time. You're done with feeling anxious, unhappy, and fearful. You're sick and tired of being sick and tired. You're looking to improve communication in your relationships and always giving so much to others, never having anyone give back to you. You need more time to yourself. You're ready to wear your queen's crown and you're open to learning and engaging the process because that's the only way this is gonna work, y'all, if you're open to it. So you have to be open and, and, and eager to learn and to fully engage in the process. And you're ready for a change, which I know you are if you're here, you are ready for a change. So how to get started? Simple. The masterclass takes place on Saturday, April 14th, 2018 at 12 noon. And it's a self-investment of $167, but the fast action price is $97. And I know we have some fast action takers up in here. So $97, you cannot beat that. It is a birthday gift from me to you for my birthday. My birthday is April 6th. The price goes up after the 6th back up to $167 because I want you to celebrate my birthday with me, right? And it's a guaranteed life-changing class. As long as you're willing to do the work, I guarantee that it's going to change your life. It's going to get you your life. But guess what? That's not all, y'all. That's not all. Like, what? <laughs> what? What? Yes, that's not all. Because da -da -da -da, I'm adding a bonus as a special gift to you in honor of my birthday. I'm going to give you your, my 3D affirmation technique. I'm gonna tell you how to use music to fill your bank account. Is that possible? It's possible. And how to instantly shift the energy in any space at any time. Okay, we gotta get rid of those negative Nancys. All right, so here's the information. Go ahead and enroll, it is open now bit.ly slash master sensuality because we are what mastering sensuality yes we are yes we are so i'm going to go ahead 
and go to the chat rooms. And if anybody has any questions, go ahead and type them in the box. Any questions? I think we both hummed about baths. I love baths. Yes. I love a good bath too. Oh, number four, you want me to rewind? Okay. Sure, hold on. Number four is turn selfless into selfies. The class is $97 for now, fast action takers, up until April the 6th. Yes, so ladies, if you enjoyed this class, if you enjoyed this class, I wanna see you type ow, <laughs> type ow in the chat room, ow, cause this is a party, ow. <laughs> oh, thank you, April. I'm so happy that you got something from it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to shout out to all of my BCers in the house. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> all right now, all right now. Thank you so much. So if there are there any questions, any other questions? All right, Shalita. That's love. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Thank you, Sunshine. Thank you, girl. The rich mom. Hey, Salita. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you so much, everybody. This meant so much to me. I, I'm telling you, I'm just going to be transparent. There were a lot of technical difficulties leading up to this class, but it was so worth it. So thank you so much. And thank you to my coach, the bomb, Shalina Diva. So, <laughs> and Kali for saving my life. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Yes, girl, go write down those screenshots. Let it sink in because that, this is your homework. Like I want y'all, I want you to practice it, okay? I want you to send me a message on Facebook or Instagram and let me know like how you've been doing, how has it working for you? Dig deep into that sensuality. All right, y'all. Well, if there aren't any other questions, we're going to say good night. I'm going to say good night and thank you once again for being here. And um, check me out online at www.soulfullsolutions.com. I love you guys and have a wonderful night. Be full of yourselves. Take care. Good night. Okay, Daphne, I got you. <laughs>